Watch how fast this thing updates. That's so cool. Hey everyone, I'm Grain and welcome back to the channel. We're doing gauges again because I can't make up my mind. And that really is the whole reason why we're doing gauges. I love the one gauge. I think it's a fantastic product. I really like the way it looks. I'm just not a fan of how it looks in my Wrangler, which makes absolutely no sense. But it's just, I want to look at an analog gauge, which is odd because I had digital gauges in here before, which I really liked, but those gauges went with the Kubota engine that was in here, and that's going in a different vehicle as well. I have a lot of things in the works. So this is going to go to another project that I have. I think it's going to fit it perfectly. Can't say enough good things about the one gauge kit. I really like it. Now, and I am going to be using this piece here as a template to cut these sheets. So before we get to doing that, let's go over the gauges I have. Right now I'm only running six gauges because that's what my budget could afford because I've been doing everything three times. But we're going to start off here with the speedometer, which is a little bit interesting. This is a GPS speedometer, so it's going to be very accurate. But it is a marine speedometer. The reason for that is... I'm a huge fan of resolution of data, meaning I want to use at any one time 75% of the gauge of what it can tell me. So if you go to Autometer's website and you look up their GPS speedometers, they're all either 120 miles per hour, or 160 miles per hour, and I think they have some that are 200 miles per hour. This Jeep is never going to hit 120 miles per hour. So I went with a marine speedometer because it goes to 100 miles per hour, just like the factory cluster did on this vehicle. Next, we have a diesel tachometer. It goes to 5,000 RPM. I believe this engine starts redlining at 4,500, so that is perfect. We have a all-mechanical boost gauge that goes to 35 PSI. That's going to be perfect. We have an EGT gauge that goes to 1,600 degrees Fahrenheit. And I believe these motors don't like to see anything over 1,400 degrees for a split second. Next, we have the programmable fuel level gauge, which I'm really excited about. There is a setting where you can set it, you empty the tank, you set the empty, you then fill the tank completely full, and you set it again, and you have an accurate full to empty reading on your fuel tank, which I have not had on this rig since I put a diesel engine in it. Twice now. And lastly, we have a coolant temperature gauge, which this one's actually what they call a low temperature gauge. It goes from 60 degrees to 210. Most of the temperature gauges I have found usually went to like 250, 280, or 300 degrees. If this engine's running anything over 210 degrees, I know I'm having serious problems because diesels tend to run cool anyway. And again, I wanted really good resolution of data. So having all these gauges in a range where it can use upwards of 75, 80% of the gauge to tell me what the vehicle is doing is really beneficial to me. So that's an overview of the gauges. Now I'm actually gonna remove the one gauge. I kind of made a mistake with the one gauge. I set this up too high. So once it was installed with my steering wheel, I actually couldn't see like the top 5% of the screen, which is what I'm trying to prevent. So I'm going to get to work. Here's my current layout. This would be my Speedo. This would be EGT. This would be Boost because I kind of want those two gauges next to each other. This would be Coolant, so H2O. And this would be Fuel. Now, admittedly, I thought I was going to have more room on this. 
And the gauge I'm a little bit worried about seeing is this one right here. So I'm gonna quickly go move this into the Jeep. I'm just gonna put two screws in it and see if I can easily see all these gauges when my steering wheel is in place and I'm sitting in the correct position. That's about how it looks for me. So now from here, I can just see the top edge of the coolant gauge. Speedometers kind of be almost center. EGT, I'm not gonna be able to see the edge of the bezel, but I'll be able to see the gauge and the fuel and boost gauges I'll be able to see very easily. All right, so I'm not even gonna show what I did because I did it wrong. What I've kind of decided is I'm gonna wait until tomorrow, until the eighth inch thick ABS piece of plastic gets here. And the reason for that is, earlier when I said, oh hey, this feels pretty strong, and I feel like this is gonna work, once I cut all the holes in this, I mean, this thing was flimsy. It took three attempts, but I finally got the piece of ABS plastic cut where all the gauges fit. Clearly not a skill set of mine, and I'm sure there are much better ways of doing it. But it's done. I like the way it works, and I think it's going to work really well. So what I'm going to do now is clean up the hood of the Jeep, and I'm going to start working on installing all the sending units for the gauges, and then I'll move to the inside of my Jeep and start wiring this up to my dashboard. Now that I have everything routed in through the firewall into my dashboard, I'm gonna first take off the steering wheel and then I'm gonna start trying to figure out how I'm gonna hook up all of the sending units and whatnot to my gauges here. I also need to figure out how I'm going to mount my diesel tachometer. I think I'm gonna remove this piece of plastic here and see if I can't mount it directly to the windshield frame and then cut out the plastic so I can have it as tucked in as possible so it doesn't really limit my visibility out of the bottom corner of the windshield. So I have my tachometer mounted and overall I'm really happy with this, but what I am going to do now is get another one of my tachometers and I'm going to hook it up to one of these two wires and there is a switch or a dial in the back of this where you have to adjust it so that this actually matches the actual RPM because you're adjusting for the size of your alternator and also if I get sporadic readings on this i have to go adjust where i put the sensor on the alternator as well so that's going to be what i work on next this should give me an accurate tack reading and i can get this adjusted based on this tack Now that I know this works and it's calibrated, I'm gonna fix all my wiring. Again, this was all temporary just to get that adjusted. So yeah, that's gonna be what I work on now. I 
I will fully admit this is not the best wiring job I have ever done. And at some point in the future, I will probably redo it. And this is where, admittedly, the one gauge shines because it, it takes everything on that one hub and it really does make wiring it so much easier. So first, I'm gonna turn off the lights and check. Nice, that is awesome. So now if I, okay. Yeah, that's right, that's about room temperature. That's about room temperature. Antenna short. Uh, I might have damaged the antenna installing that. Okay, let me go prop the uh, shop door open and we will try turning this on and see if all the gauges work. I'm gonna need to look into that antenna issue. EGT is definitely working. Oh! Acquiring signal. I'm inside my shop right now, so I don't expect that to work, and I still need to get that adjusted correctly as well. I mean, look how fast the tack is. That is so cool. Hey, we acquired a signal. So now I am going to work on just putting this all back together and I guess we'll take it out for a test drive. All right, everyone, I've got the Jeep outside. I have it all put back together. Mostly I still don't have this panel on just in case I need to take it back out, which I might. But what I'm going to do right now is start it up real quick. I'm going to wait for the GPS to acquire signal. I think I have damaged the antenna. I've had that antenna for a couple of years now and I've moved it a lot, so I might need to replace it, but I'm gonna wait real quick, see if it will acquire the signal, and then I'll take the Jeep on a test drive. Yeah, I'm gonna wait and see if that goes away. It acquired the signal, so we're gonna see. Oh, wow. That updates really fast. Oh, that's so cool. And that is almost matching exactly what my quick six is telling me in terms of speed, which is exactly what I wanted. Try that again. Oh, my water temperature is really high. That's all I have for this video. I'm basically back to waiting on parts. I've ordered a new antenna because I've damaged the GPS antenna over the three or four years that I've now owned it. So I'm waiting on the antenna. I went ahead and got a replacement sending unit for my coolant temperature sensor because that is clearly not accurate. And I still haven't configured the fuel level gauge yet either, which I know how I'm going to have to do that and I want to do that in a different video, but overall I'm very happy with the autometer gauges. Again, I have nothing bad to say about the one gauge. I think it's a wonderful product and I can't wait to use it in another car that I own on this property, but I feel like for the look and feel of this Jeep, the autometer really gives me the information in the way that I want to consume it, if that makes any sense. So anyway. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you again very soon.
Goodbye.